So I will present to you Isabel Dairon. Dairon. <laughs> so welcome. Uh, artist, creator, designer, thinker. It's difficult to present Isabel briefly according to the size of her CV. Uh, but designer and researcher in design, she graduated from NC Les Ateliers in Paris and from ESAD in Reims. Uh, she conceives scenarios that are articulated between natural resources and habitability. Her approach is diversified and falls within the fields of project design, urban design, and space design. Her projects put into perspective the importance of environmental issues and their field of applications while, while valorizing local and available resources. Um, some of her works are gathered under the theme of topic, which means in French, in French relative to a specific place, Topic O, Topic O Decim, Topic Ciel, Topic Feuille, received numerous awards like Lille Design Prize, the Big Prize of the City of Paris, and the Audi Talent Prize. Um, she also exhibits her work in France, uh, in the International Design Biennale in Saint Etienne, the Designers Days in Paris, and other, lots of other places. Laureate of the Fair Design 2018 and the New Words in 2021, uh, she created the studio IDAE, whose activity is structured around three fields, fields of expertise uh, that are acting in a synergy with the urban design, space, and research. She now works in collaboration with Pauline Avrion and Caroline Manovitz. Thanks for being with us. The floor is yours. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, in the context of this uh, conference on non-human environments, I chose to talk on projects related to um, natural flows, uh, like water, wind, and sunlight. The, the starting point of uh, this research was a um, reaction to a notion, habitable. Actually, when I was a student, uh, I used to read some essays of uh, design and architecture. And some texts mention that um, architecture and design would have the task of making the world habitable. And I found it was a very beautiful um, project. At a time when I was searching uh, the need for becoming a designer, I wanted to be part of these people who contribute to the world habitability. But then I ask my, myself, uh, what does it mean exactly, habitable or habitability? So I dedicated my graduation thesis to the study of uh, this notion, habitability, and I have traced the history of this notion through different areas, such, such as astronomy, aeronautics, urban planning, architecture. And little by little, I was moving away from this fantasy image of habitable. Because make a place habitable means, means a lot of different things. It means bring into line with technical standards, create a standardized habitat, sometimes force people to live in the same way, but also, and above all, and, and it, what, it was what in, uh, interests me a lot, it means disconnect a place to live from its environment, ensure an habitat able to produce its own climate. And this is where the project topic uh, starts. Um, and I wanted to define then this notion differently by making some uh, project. So for about 10 years, I've been working on this research called TOPIC. So it's, it's not to be confused with TOPIC in, in English. 
So it means related to natural flows, water, sunlight, and wind. And at the beginning of this research, the questions were, is it possible to establish new relations with primary energy in any given space? What kind of new objects can we design if we want to be reconnected to our environment? I answered with a collection of devices that make use of the water, wind, and or sunlight. The first project has addressed the context, the context of hydraulic network in Paris, and especially the rainwater management. So for in, uh, instance, this is um, a rainwater harvester that transforms rainwater into drinkable water. Another project was a leaves collector that collects leaves with the wind. Or another example of this research is a sun dial that uses the body to get solar time. It consists of a belly band and uh, ground mark makings, marking. Sorry. Among these projects, I wanted to talk a bit more about one of the most recent projects and one of the maybe most important for me. It is a project that focuses on a water network in Paris that uses Seine waters. By the 19th century, Paris had set up a network for non-drinkable water to be used for watering public gardens and also cleaning the streets. This system draws water from uh, the main river, Seine. Then the water goes to three water plants where the water is just filtered, and that is very important. The water is not treated chemically. What is interesting with this water system is that it enables to provide a cheaper and less energy consuming than, than drinkable water. A few words about this uh, network. So the, the water uh, flows through gutters and some green spaces. The issue regarding this network is that it is old, it has not been renovated, but nowadays it's still used by the city for cleaning streets and watering green spaces, but it is actually underused. And actually for the next few years the plan is to reduce the network by 30%. When I discovered this issue, I realized it was um, a real issue for design. I mean that this network needs to imagine new uses for this water and also give a shape to these new uh, uses. So in 2016, thanks to a grant, I created a small team and we started to work on three devices. The first one was for the collective gardens. The second one um, in the, at the center was for common areas of apartment buildings. And on the right, it was for public places. The first project is a pond that includes a plant purification system and water cans for collective gardens. The water is filtered by plants on the left and then goes to a second pool where you can see some water cans. These water cans are a reinterpretation of an old medieval object called chantepleur. This name means, so in English, um, singing when it's filled and crying when it's emptied. What interested me was the, the way you can fill this water can. It, it fills from the bottom, so it, it, it works like a straw. And actually, this is the common point of all the devices we we design for this water network. All of them uh, fill from the bottom, and it was very important because it was a way to translate the, the origin of the water. So we redesigned this chantepleur, lighter and easier to use by any public by using plastic rotomolding. The second project was a cleaning point for the common areas um, of apartment buildings. 
What is important to mention is that uh, any co-ownership in Paris can ask for a connection to this net water network, but nobody really knows and no objects exist. Of course, you could say, okay, we can use um, uh, uh, some taps, but there's always the risk that people might mistake for drinkable water. So the, this cleaning point is composed of two parts, a concrete part and a bucket with a hole. You press down on the pedal, then the water goes to the bucket. And we imagine that the caretaker of the building could use this water to clean a courtyard or a building hall. The third project deals with the temperature increase in urban space. Of course, we all know uh, that dense cities uh, with many impervious surfaces and non-vegetated, will be more and more faced with the heat island effect. In Paris, for instance, the daily average temperatures are already around 2 to 3 degrees Celsius higher than the rest of the region, and this could reach up to 10 degrees in the summer in the next few years. There, therefore, this water network may be, could be an effective answer to that issue. So we designed a cooling point for public space that cool the ambient air using evaporation of water thanks to a porous material. In period of heat waves, we could imagine that municipal, municipal cleaning agents may open the valve of this device. Uh, so yeah, this is a picture of um, of the prototype of one meter, 150, uh, 1.50 uh, meter in order to make it easily in a workshop. And a few words about the operation. So it's simple. During the summer, the device is in use. A valve is open according to a, a specified time zone. For instance, between uh, 11 and 6, 11, 6 p.m. Once open, the water rises in a small tank and then passes through a grid. The water then spreads on a porous surface and evaporates, providing cooling ambient air. This device builds on uh, two studies, one in Japan that, that de demonstrated a temperature decrease of two degrees in the morning and four in the afternoon in watering sunlit surfaces. And also some tests in Paris in 2017 that showed also a decrease of the perceived uh, temperature. This is a, just a picture of um, an exhibition where we showed uh, the prototypes uh, with a lot of drawings uh, too that explain the context of this water network and how the devices uh, worked. And a few years later, we had the chance to develop this idea of cooling uh, point thanks to the program FAIR organized by uh, Pavillon de l'Arsenal in Paris. And we designed this coolen, cooling point for a street in the 20th arrondissement, the Blanchard Street, which was mostly used as parking lots for cars, motos, and, and bikes. And the goal for us were implementing this device for um, first designing a street for children without any cars and for inhabitants where they can play, meet, discuss. Secondly, reducing temperature during summer and um, heat waves with a local resource. Um, so I'm talking about the water from the Seine. And thirdly, developing new uses for this water network instead of using drinkable water for all uses. So we designed Aerosen, it's the name of this project, for this street in collaboration with city services and uh, an engineering office. And around the device, we imagined some road markings for children. The device is about 20 square meters it has three water outlets and it's made out of mineral aggregates. We organized also a workshop with children living in the neighborhood in order to imagine with them a playground with road markings. 
And here is a, a picture of the redesign of the street. This project was um, achieved in 2020, uh, and the COVID stopped everything, so it was quite complicated. Um, the water department found traces of COVID in the water, so um, during several months it hasn't been used. used sorry. But it still exists and uh, it's still used now. And, but hopefully we had the chance to do some other projects with, uh, with this network. Um, for example, this is a device to clean the common areas of buildings. And the project was for Paris Habitat, a public housing company. Um, first, when I met um, a person from Paris Habitat, I showed the prototype we designed a few years uh, before. But then I, I realized it was really important to start from, from scratch. Sorry. So we started with the, a site in Paris, 150 apartments that belongs to um, this public housing company. And Paris Habitat was very interested by uh, using this uh, network, this water network, because it means also reducing um, tenants' costs. At the beginning of the project, we did several interviews with the caretakers, gardeners, and maintenance workers in order to get an, ov an overview of the water consumption. Uh, sorry. Oh. We've carried out a mapping of how the water is used. We understood, for, in for instance, the water was mainly used for cleaning out the bins, and the uh, building holes. However, gardeners don't use a lot of water only the first three years after planting. We realized the most efficient was to use a 50 meters long pipe to meet these needs. So based on, this, uh, on that study, we started to design a cleaning zone uh, in front of the building. The project consists of a cleaning station and a bin washing area. We have designed this cleaning station to be, of course, easy to maintain. And you can see the, here the device and the bin washing area. Uh, that is, it is covered by uh, ceramics in order to tell also the story of where the water comes from. Also, in order to carry out an experiment on a larger scale, we have connected the 18 waste disposal sites to this water network. In this project, mediation was particularly important. I mean, telling the story of where the water came from, for example. And it was really also important for the Paris Habitat to, um, to tell this story to the inhabitants. Within the Studio IDE, we also developed spatial design projects with the same approach. I mean, understand the context, the place, the territory, design while saving resources, put technology in its right place, and also respond to the challenges of uh, narration or mediation. And as we are in the interior design department, I wanted to talk about two projects. Um, the first one is an exhibition space for the Maif Social Club in Paris in 2019. The exhibition was about ecological transition. And I, while I was uh, searching um, for this project, I found a, a quote from uh, Jules Renard that, that was really interesting. The sentence was, to think is to look for clearings in a forest. We followed this sentence and we created um, a clearing. The idea was also to enhance the central shaft of light 
and to transform the forest of posts into trees. We needed also to reinforce this idea of uh, clearing in order to offer different mediation paths to visitors according to the issues related to the different environments like air, uh, plant, um, urban environment, um, soil, and so on. We designed the floor as a kind of a map. So I made a, a huge drawing that was then reproduced on carpet tiles. And the carpet tiles were made out of uh, recycled nets. After the exhibition, all the materials were given back and recycled. And an, exep an example here is the carpet that was given back to a school near Paris. Another example of an interior design project we designed for Envy two years ago. Um, it's Envy Le Labo. Envy is a company involved in, uh, in the circular economy. For nearly 40 years, they have been repairing and reselling household appliances all over France, like uh, washing machine, fridge, oven, and so on. And one of their specificities is that they employ people in social rehabilitation. What is interesting is they are involved in both environmental and social issues. Envy represents 50 uh, rehabilitation companies and 100 sites for reselling household appliances. Two years ago, the um, Envy Federation contacted me and they were in the process of having a building constructed in Paris, including office, uh, space for training, workshop, a shop, and so on. And the project consists of working on the layout, signage, educational route, the graphic and the identity, furniture, wind window display for the building. But one of the main challenge, challenges were of the project was to design with reused materials as much as possible. So we began by organizing workshops with Envy employees and neighborhood association to identify the future needs and uses of the different areas of the building. The graphic identity of the place was designed from felt, felt pen drawings to embody the humans at the core of Envy activities. Um. Ah, sorry. For the shop, we chose metal structures that can reconfigure the space according to the quantity and type of uh, appliance. We added also printed plywood panels to this structure. These are um, drawings that represent uh, the domestic space in a very simple way to provide a more uh, friendly or uh, welcoming atmosphere. For the signage, we used oven resistors. And for the interior design of, of the space, we used the end of series carpeting, we used these reused woods, um, and through reuse, recycling, and also raw finishes, we were able to avoid uh, 20 tons of new elements which correspond to 45% of the total materials and objects intended for the interior design of the building. Another example of oven resistors. We designed also an educational route for visitors with the 40 tags. Um, and these tags inform visitors where the materials and objects in the building come from and how they are made. And uh, finally, in order to make people want to enter this special shop, we have designed window display that represent main items sold here. Yeah, okay. 
Um, and in closing this presentation, I would like to talk about a tool that I usually use for um, my projects. I think, I really think it's important not just to respond to commissions, but to always be a force for bringing forward proposals in relation to current issues. And to remain this, in this research posture, I have been using a tool for many years. I show you here some uh, large formats of this research wall. I, I call this research wall. But the size depends a bit on the duration of the project. Sometimes there are smaller ones. I usually start with one sheet and add more from left to right and from top to the bottom. On this format, I put some elements that are part of analysis of the project. So it can be uh, photos, plans, details, um, extracts of texts, and so on, but also some more sensitive elements like uh, texture, sketches, references. And what interests me with this tool is to embrace uh, different dimensions of a project, not con to conceptualize first and then ask the question of the form or the color, but to think all at once. I think it is also influence, it also influences the way the project is designed according to uh, the place. And it helps me to take into account its different relationships to the site, such as geography, techniques, social, vegetal, geology. And by doing this work, I make links between uh, the different elements and gradually recurrence appear. And this is what I rely on to express an intention. It is at this point that I make a drawing that express an intention, and these are drawings that I make most of the time on A3 format with a felt pen. These drawings are the first existent existence of the project, and they help me to believe in it, and also to find then the means to make them real. Thank you very much.